Hi, I'm Frode Berg, double bass player with the Oslo Philharmonic Orchestra, as well as a jazz musician and studio musician for a variety of projects. Today I'm testing the Gensler RE slash Q, EQ and filter pedal. First, a short disclaimer. I was approached by Bassanova, a bass specialty shop in Oslo. They asked me to do some reviews for products they want to feature in their shop. I'm not getting paid to do these reviews, but they're providing the products. I will, however, be returning them after the review. The reviews will feature my personal thoughts on the products based on close to 30 years as a professional musician. Bassanova is not censoring these in any ways. In fact, they won't even be seeing them before they're published. So all you see here is my unfiltered opinions. So back to the Gensler pedal. The REQ is a larger footprint pedal about twice the size of your standard boss pedals and it's branded as a dual function EQ pedal. Gensler's website labels it as the Swiss army knife for tone. It features both a filter section and a five band EQ section. This can be individually switched in and out of the circuitry. The EQ section even has its own level control, either for balance, balancing levels between EQ'd and un-EQ'd, or it can be used as a clean boost for solos or other situations where more gain is required. Let's take a close look at the pedal itself. At the top of the pedal is the filter section. It consists of a high pass and a low pass filter. The high pass filter is variable between 30 and 200 Hertz. The low pass range goes from 16 kilohertz all the way down to one kilohertz. Right off the bat, I'm very excited about this filter section as it's a feature that I feel has been missing from regular bass EQ pedals, but a feature that can be a real lifesaver and quite often very useful. I'll discuss the filter section and its uses in more detail shortly. The EQ section consists of five predefined bands. The frequencies are well thought out and very musical. From low to high, they're 90 Hz, 250 Hz, 630 Hz, 1.3 kHz and 2.6 kHz. All bands can be cut or boosted by plus or minus 12 dB. And the EQ output level control has a range of plus minus 9 dB. The pedal is powered via a DC adapter, which is not included, and it will accept voltages from 9 volts up to 18 volts. The higher voltages will give you more headroom to play with and is highly recommended, especially if you have a hot output active bass. For this video, I'll be using a 12 volt DC adapter. About the filters. First of all, what are high and low pass filters and why should we as bass players care? The labels can be kind of counterintuitive as it's easy to think a device with the word high in it has something to do with high frequencies. On the contrary, since it's a pass filter, high pass means frequencies higher than the setting are passed, in other words, unaffected, whereas frequencies from the filter point and down are attenuated. The opposite holds true of the low pass filter. Here, frequencies below the set frequencies are left untouched. They are passed, whereas frequencies above are attenuated. Pay special attention to the word attenuated. A common misconception regarding filters is that everything above or below the frequency point is cut out, eliminated, spoink. This is not the case. Audio that is affected is gradually attenuated. Now, I hear a choir of people shouting, rolling of bass, we're bass players, we want all the bass we can get, why on earth would we want to filter out bass, come on. There are a number of reasons why you would want to filter out some super low end, even as bass players. One pretty clear reason is to get rid of any rumbling way below our fundamental of the lowest note. On a four string bass, low E is around 41 Hertz, and on a five string, the low B has its tonal fundamental at 31 Hertz. Any audio below that can stem from physical noise, such as parts of our body touching or hitting the instrument in any way. Also, when we set our strings in motion, right before the note becomes discernible, the attack itself can and will contain frequencies below the fundamental. Let's demonstrate this quickly. 
Here's a spectrogram. Take a look what happens when I mute the strings and hit the body of the bass with my hand. As you can see, there's quite a lot of sonic activity happening way below the 41 hertz of this instrument's lowest range. Now let's see what exists within the pluck of the string itself. For this, I'm again muting the strings, but rather than hitting the body of the bass, I'm simply plucking the low E string at various intensities. Again, we find a lot of stuff below our lowest note. This is all stuff that will be present as a part of our signal under normal playing circumstances with varying degrees. Our amp, the PA and monitors don't know that our lowest intelligent audio information stops at 41 Hertz. So they will all faithfully try to reproduce these frequencies, making them work much harder than needed, often making our fundamental sound less clear in the process. Low frequencies are the hardest for amps and speakers to reproduce, so filtering out this unwanted and unneeded information would free up a lot of headroom in our faithful gear. Another reason we might wish to use a high-pass filter could be to fit our instrument better in a crowded mix. For instance, have you ever heard someone complain over the sound at a concert, saying they can't hear the bass, the bass drum is way too loud, is this a bass drum festival? Maybe you've even played a show only to be told that the bass was buried in the mix. Our bass shares the frequency spectrum of most bass drums and floor drums. They're often fundamentally voiced in the 50 to 70 Hertz region, which means right in the middle or model of most our lowest bass fundamentals. When we hear bass notes loud and clear, we're actually hearing the fundamental, but even more so the instrument's harmonics or overtone range. The first harmonic over our fundamental is the octave above, then an octave plus a fifth, next two octaves above, etc. One octave above the fundamental of 41 Hertz is at exactly double the frequencies, in other words, 82 Hertz. Remember, filters roll off information at a steady rate below where we've set it, meaning we are not cutting them completely. So, in order to make it possible to turn up our bass in the mix, or even get our amp to play louder, it can often be a good idea to slightly attenuate the lowest octave without taking it out completely, obviously. I like to experiment with the filter somewhere from 40 Hz up to plus minus 100 Hz, depending on the type of music and also the room. Which leads me to my final use of the filter, taming bass heavy rooms. You know, the ones where whatever you play sets off an earth shaking rumble everywhere and makes any sort of monitoring and hearing one another rather difficult. Some constructive filtering of lows can often work wonders with this. Give it a try. As with everything relating to sound, always use your ears when dialing in these things. If you overdo the filtering, you may end up with a thin sounding puny tone. While it can be loud without causing interference with the drums, it's rather useless as a bass instrument. Easy does it, but I've sometimes been surprised at how good things sound with high pass filters set higher than what I would normally think it should be, based on our, the fundamental low E. If needed, you can experiment with boosting the lows after the filter. You might be able to compensate any perceived loss of bottom end like this, and at the same time have cleared up the sub rumblings and any unwanted noise. And remember that bass alone is a completely different thing than getting it to sit properly and audibly within a busy mix. The low pass filter does the same, but from the opposite side. To me, it's not as critical to the function of our instrument, but it will be able to tame noise, a hiss, if you play in a place with difficulties with electric noises. It can tame a crisp new set of strings or simply provide you with that vintage vibe of rolled off treble. Again, go by your ears. All right, so Fender Player Plus Precision Bass, Active Bass, uh, into the Gensler REQ, into the interface. I'll play a cup I play a bass line a few times starting with the filter out so no filter for the first part
The EQ section of the pedal consists of five bands, as mentioned, as well as an EQ output level. Let's talk about the output level first. You can choose to use this in a couple of different ways. First, whenever you apply EQ to a signal, you're either boosting or cutting certain areas of the frequency spectrum. It's rather logical then that as you boost and cut, you'll end up with a varying degrees of more or less output. So to compensate this, we can either cut or boost the EQ output level. Here I'm applying boost at the low mid and the mid. See how my signal is louder when I activate the EQ section. To compensate this, I'll turn down the EQ output level by ear while switching the EQ in and out until the EQ'd volume matches the un-EQ'd volume. <laughs> Likewise, if I scoop out the mids for some slap playing like this, the volume drops post EQ. Oftentimes, low bass can suffer a bit when switching from fingerstyle to slap. It's kind of the nature of the technique as more highs become prominent through the strings hitting the frets, etc. In this example, I'll then boost the signal post EQ with the EQ output level control. In this manner, I can even out my signal so that when I switch from fingerstyle to slap, I don't get a drop in volume. The other way to use this control would be to actually boost the volume of the EQ output, making it louder for musical passages that should jump more forward in the mix. For instance, if you get a bass solo, you might want to shape your tone a certain way, plus boost your volume slightly. Remember not to overdo this. You could end up driving whatever comes after the pedal in a way you don't really want. If you have a compressor after the EQ, it will compress more. You might want it to, but you definitely want to be aware of this. Or you might overload and distort the input of your amp or the sound engineer's input at the mixing desk. It's always a good practice to let the sound engineer hear your various levels at soundcheck so he can set his input levels correctly. And, it, and then he or she doesn't have to frantically adjust the input gain whenever you go total overload in your fretless ballad solo. Now, the 5-band EQ. As mentioned, this consists of five preset frequencies at preset bell shapes. The frequencies are set at very musical values. This is no surgical EQ for notching out troublesome areas, but more a mastering type of EQ, where you can use broad strokes to balance out your tonal spectrum. It is to be noted, however, that at the start of each, each control, in both directions, gain changes are rather subtle, meaning you have quite some travel of the controls to precisely set the amount to cut or boost. Toward the top and bottom range of the controls, however, the gain changes become more extreme, so it's not an even gain knob. I like this as it's easier to be precise with what you want in the more subtle ranges without the frequencies suddenly jumping out if you move the controller here. You do get extreme cuts and boosts toward the end of the travel, so here you'll want to move the controls a bit more careful to avoid extreme changes. The claim Swiss Army Knife for tone is slightly misleading, as you can't really notch very detailed frequencies out or set narrow boosts. However, if to Gensler, Swiss Army Knife means something of high quality, then their claim is more than valid. All in all, I'm really liking this pedal. I've been wishing for an EQ for bass in a pedal form that included a high pass filter for many years, and here's a perfect option. I find it strange that filters are not normally a part of EQ pedals, as it integrates so well with a basic EQ. The pedal feels high quality all over, it's sturdy, the EQ section is transparent, it doesn't seem to enforce any different character outside of EQing, which is a good thing for a pedal like this. I have one very minor issue, 
And that is that I would like to see center detents on the EQ output level and the five band EQ controls. This is not a deal breaker in my opinion, but it's always nice to be able to quickly set things back to zero and be confident about having done so. However, as mentioned, the filters behave very subtle at the first part of their control movement, so it's not really a problem. It's just you set them straight up as well as you can. But just a thought as I've been working with the pedal. It is quicker if it goes click and that's that. All in all, I'm excited about the pedal. Big thumbs up from here. Go check it out. Please hit the like button under this video if you enjoy content like this and subscribe to the channel. It really helps and inspires me to keep making videos like this. More reviews coming up shortly. See you then.